So when the phrase, I'm doing a movie about fast cars comes out of my mouth, you're probably thinking of the Fast and the Furious series, aren't you? Well, in this case, you're wrong. I'm doing actually the retarded cousin of the Fast and the Furious series, Redline. God help us all. Now, without any further ado, let's just roll it. Yes, nothing says quality like a production company that has made only two films, both of them crap. Also, where's the generic hip-hop music? Well, swag, YOLO 420, this movie's really crack a lack and now. There are cars that get you from point A to point B. I'm sorry, but doesn't that describe every mode of transportation ever? And then there are cars that get you from point A to point B really fast. Fast cars cost big money, and with millions of dollars at stake, there are people who will do anything to win. I'm sorry, but that voiceover was so damn generic it could pretty much apply to anything. Watch this. And then there are pogo sticks to get you from point A to point B really fast. Fast pogo sticks cost big money, and with millions of dollars at stake, there are people who will do anything to win. At this point, all hope for writing talent in this movie is dying fast. On the other hand, it all depends on how they introduce their characters and what interesting way they'll choose. The music mogul who can't resist a high-stakes bet. The eccentric, he plays by his own rules. The dreamer, not sure where he's going, but he wants to get there fast. The producer, you scratch his back, he'll scratch yours. Holy Christ, that's the way you announce a lineup of action figures, not characters in a movie. Jason, the new record will be 1 hour 45 minutes when you make it to Jerry's Penthouse Suites in Vegas tonight. An hour and 45 minutes? Michael, it's a four hour drive! Think of this as a school for the gods. You ready to graduate yet? Eccentric was just a code word for retarded, wasn't it? Oh, and speaking of retarded, is it time for the pretentious and bombastic intro yet? <laughs> That's enough of that. Million bucks for this. Hi, Agro from the makers of OK. And surprise, surprise, it's time for more bland character introduction. The war hero. He fights for what he believes in. And that's me, the girl next door. If you live next to a racetrack. Or a brothel. Meanwhile. I'm gonna skip this bullshit. Got a beautiful voice there, girl. You looking good, you know what I'm saying? You got that look that look like money. I bet if I ran a wire coat hanger through your ass cheeks, it'd come out covered in gold. That's what I'm talking about. This is my leg. Yeah, that's a 4 GT. They came out at a recommended retail price of like 160,000 US dollars, though they're often sold for much more than that. And your total comes out to 8,000 even. 8,000? You, you you can't be fucking serious. $8,000 for a Ford GT. You sure that's not 8,000 gold bars or 8,000 Rembrandt paintings? I mean, Jesus Christ, 8 grand for a Ford GT? How many donkeys is the McLaren F1 in the back store I'm gonna cost me? Alright, buddy, old pal, owe you an apology. No, just 8 grand. Lady, you're a worse business person than Hitler selling copies of Mein Kampf in a Jewish synagogue. <laughs> Okay, I have to admit, you got me there. The driving sequences in this movie are pretty good. Though they do lack the energy and pizzazz of the Fast and the Furious because there's no cop chasing them, so that makes things a whole lot less tense. Well, I've just helped you. I fixed your car. Oh, so she was only repairing the car for $8,000. I didn't need to get all pissed off. Of course, this still doesn't explain anything because what is she doing repairing $8,000 on a $200,000 car? I guess it's true what they say. Fuzzy dice really do make your car go faster. You want us to be your own little musical pit crew? Exactly. Well, this ain't gonna end well. Later. Well, this is pretty boring. Time to beat up some random bad guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what unit was he with? The first armored clones of Bruce Lee division? Oh, random henchmen. Masters of both accuracy and subtlety. Michael may be blood, but he isn't family. And whatever he's up to now, I can guarantee it's no good. He's a crook, okay? He, he always has been. He always will be. He destroyed our family. Why can't you see that? Why are you so stupid still? You can tell I'm angry because I'm squinting. A few moments later.
Jesus Christ, guys, did you see that? That was amazing. I wonder what they're going to follow this cool scene up with. You know, sometimes the things we're afraid of, the things we really want the most. Can I say that I was afraid? This acting I like. Well, that was a bit of a jarring shift in tone. I thought the GT was modified for the race outside Vegas. You must believe I lost my mind. The Ford, although I love the car dearly, is an inexpensive car for an inexpensive race. Yeah, man, it's such a cheap car that I was apprehensive about spending a whole eight grand on it earlier. And your total comes out to eight thousand even. Whoa, whoa, baby, you're talking about eight stacks. We clearly got ourselves a baller here. We gotta bring out horsepower. Play with the big boys. We're gonna bring out the SLR for the race outside Vegas. I traded a pack of crayons for it. A pack of crayons, son. I gotta admit, that was pretty cool, though. It would be better if some of the shots didn't look like a game of Mario Kart. <laughs> Well, it's about time what took you Hughes this bastard so long. Damn! Ah, oh, right. We need him. The Dome City race in two days. Hey, relax. You gonna drive for me? Me? Spent three million dollars, you crazy? Look, boss, I can drive, but I don't know. I'm not up to that. Don't worry about it. Just bring the silver SLR down to the track. I got a plan. Well, there are two things you can learn from this race sequence. Number one, this guy is the only guy worth shit in this entire movie. And number two, that the reason for this whole entire race was simply to get that driver arrested so Infamous needs a new driver. Guess who he's gonna choose? And considering that the next few minutes comprise of wonderful scenes like this... That would be great, but first I've gotta get my stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and skip straight to the plane. Uh, I gotta have my game tight, otherwise I could go broke. It's, uh, it's a bit hard for me to imagine you going broke there, mate. Dude, weren't you paying attention earlier when you was apprehensive about spending eight grand on a $200,000 car? Whoa, whoa, baby, you're talking about eight stacks. I wonder how many times I'm going to get to use that line. Man, what you talking about? I got three million on the first race. If I lose, trust. Broke. Suit line. Okay, I can understand being a gambling man, but putting your entire fortune on the line on the outcome of one race, which you don't even have a driver for, is more than a little retarded. Is that talking to you? Does it look like I care that you were talking to me? Woman, I done had enough of your mouth. Well, it's good to see we're playing to as many offensive stereotypes as possible. Pull over! Pull over right now! You know, honey, there's a reason we have flight plans. I mean, you can't just pull over a plane anywhere you want. I guess everything I know about aviation must be wrong. Such a bastard! Hit ride, good rat. Yeah, just leave her out here. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to her. Twelve seconds later. I'm taking you to the hottest club in Las Vegas. So that happens. Then it's time for the generic love interest. <laughs> then a raper tries to rape. Bro, you drink. No, thanks, I then it's time for some more kung fu for some reason. <laughs> then our hero bravely jumps over a fire pit. <laughs> before our heroes make their daring escape. <laughs> you never guess what happens next, guys. <laughs> oh, this ain't gonna end well. Which reminds me, instead of doing pretty cool CG effects or anything like that, they actually crashed millions of dollars worth of cars, including a Porsche Carrera S and also a Lamborghini Gallardo in this film. Meanwhile, the river is a two of hearts. Well, excuse me if this film didn't just turn into Casino Royale. I gotta get to my race. <laughs> well, okay, that scene had its merit. <laughs> So I guess those guys are here too. And when you look at this guy, he's like, yeah, I'm the only worthwhile character in this film. What's up? <laughs> Uncle Michael, look who's come home to us. Yeah, I know, I know. But you gotta remember, the universe conspires to bring all of this experience to you. It's a learning process, kid. It's amazing how he manages to say so much and so little both at the same time. What are you doing here? My little brother's racing today, so... I just came to watch. Thank you, God, for that exposition. Um, well, great. Okay, uh, I guess I'll see you later. 
Seriously, they have all the chemistry of a damp squib in a piranha aquarium. So yeah, of course I'm going to be skipping this point of the song. If you're wondering what the reason is that she's singing all the time, it's because she is actually the wife of the guy who produced this movie, and so he wanted to get her in this as much as he can and showcase the talent as much as he can. I accept this great! So it looks like everything's good to go. I wonder what format the race for all this money's gonna take place in. Seriously, a drag race. And not even a proper drag race with timing. Just a drag race? I mean, that is A, boring, and B, retarded. It's like putting every single dollar you own on one spin of a roulette wheel. Back in a minute, alright? You know, when a British guy is rolling around on the ground crying that he hurt his ankle, it's more than likely bullshit. 300,000. What, what, what? I thought you said it wasn't about the money. Everyone has a price. Damn. Alright, fine. We got a deal or what? Done. Surprise, surprise, she's driving for him now. But you like that? Makes you happy, huh? Mm hmm. That makes you happy. Yeah. Is it just me or do I detect a creepy uncle vibe about this guy? I just want you to be beautiful. Now I think we've gone into really bad touch territory. Maybe you're right. Maybe Uncle Michael's not such a good guy after all. I don't know, what could have given you that impression? How are you gonna make me happy? <clears throat> uh, you can win this race, right? Seriously? You went through all the trouble and the $300,000 to get this girl in your car, now you're gonna ask her this stupid bullshit? Anyway, next it's time to decide on the stakes for the real race that's about to come up. Okay, I'm gonna give you those four bars if you win. It's very generous, though. It's gonna get better than that. You lose. All I want is three million in your driver. Okay, now that we know what they're playing for, let's just get to the race, shall we? Don't tell me that this is going where I think it's going. What the? <laughs> My god. My god. They just destroyed a million dollar Lamborghini like it's a fucking Hot Wheels car under the heel of your fucking shoe. Jason! Well, I guess he's dead, and no, I don't even give the tiniest bit of shits about him. He wasn't even a developed character. Michael, I'll kill you! I'm squinting extra hard so you know I'm serious. What do you need? Guns, ammo, C4. Lots of C4, and a C4 to bring down a house. God damn it, is this a movie about car racing or Rambo Part 7? Great work, genius. Get more tooled up than Tim Taylor on a gay cruise and go jump a freight train. I'm sure no one's gonna notice that. Relax, you're safe. Uh, there's a change of clothes in the wardrobe. You come down whenever you want. You're free to roam. Lady, it's time to kick him in the nuts and just get the hell out of there. Well, at least we know where the script came from now. Damn, my one escape route. Blocked. Oh, if only Rambo would show up to rescue me. Speak of the devil. Hello? You're breaking up, can't hear you. Do you hear me? Hello? Oh no, some random guy got killed. Okay, does everybody in this movie know Kung Fu all of a sudden? Goddamn woman always needs saving. A few moments later. Here's a nice little question for you. What the hell did he need all the guns for if he didn't fire a single shot? Oh, we're doing one of those slow dramatic walk away from fire things. When's it gonna explode? When's it gonna explode? Oh god, you bastards. Mom, it's me. I'm very, very sorry, lady, but I don't have time to listen to you recount the entire story so far to your mother. 
Seriously, come on now, guys. You're just giving Birdemic a run for its money. Well, that was easy. Get dressed, and uh, I'll go get the car. Meanwhile... Stop! What do you want? A Fort Mondeo, apparently. Where's my mother, you bitch? Christ almighty, that's probably the worst line delivery I've ever heard. Let's hear it again. Where's my mother, you bitch? Oh, hi, what to be new Lisa? Oh, and by the way, we're at some sort of new race in the desert now. Quite frankly, this shit has got me completely lost at this point. Baby, let me explain what happened at last. I don't want to hear it. I just hope you bet everything on this race, because you're going to lose your ass. But then what's it going to talk shit out of? Who is that guy? That's the guy that killed Nat's father. I'm gonna have to take your word for it because we've never met him before. <laughs> this movie's still about cars, right? The pot for this wager is 100 million dollars. <laughs> Congratulations, you're a bunch of morons with more money than sense. Uh-huh, that's pretty much my reaction to seeing another classic car destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, just go ahead and answer your cell phone. It's not like you're doing anything urgent or anything. Yes, they did just throw a fucking Porsche Carrera S off the side of a mountain. Okay, wow, that was a pretty decent twist, her deliberately losing the race to screw over Michael. On the other hand, you could have seen that coming a fucking million miles away. You see right through me, don't you? Yeah, yes I do. Wow, that certainly has to be one of the greatest villain speeches of all time. Eventually. Some of my guys are outside to take you for a little ride. Buckle up, sailor, it's gonna be bumpy. And so yeah, that's pretty much him killed off and gone. Beautiful. Very. And so yeah, the dialogue doesn't get any better than that, so I'm just gonna skip to the part that we all want. The end. Good cars will get you from point A to point B. And great cars? Well, they'll just get you into trouble. M-O-D, yeah, yeah, big cars are and there you go, it ends as meaninglessly and pretentiously as it began. So, time for the final verdict. This thing is just awful. It is terrible. God damn do I hate this thing. God, I, I, I can't really put it in words of my own, so I'm just going to read off the Wikipedia page and give you an idea of just how bad this thing is is. Background. Daniel Zardek, a third grade dropout for Lebanon, migrated to the United States where he worked at gas stations and car dealerships. After seeing many mortgage brokers buy cars from the Mercedes-Benz dealership he worked at, Zardek entered the real estate business and set up the subprime lending firm Quick Loan Funding in 2002. By 2007, it had approved over $4 billion in subprime mortgages. With Zardek's take-home earnings reaching about $5 million a month, he used his earnings to buy several homes in Southern California and Las Vegas, build up his collection of expensive cars and feed his insatiable appetite for gaming. Box Office and Reception Redline was a failure at the box office and with critics. The film opened at number 11 at the US box office, grossing $3.9 million in 1,607 theaters in its opening weekend. The budget of the film was about $26 million US dollars, and after six weeks in theaters, the film only grossed $6.8 million in North America. Furthermore, Cartoon Network sued Sardeg for failing to pay $845,000 in advertising. The film was not screened for critics before it opened and reviews after its premiere were universally unfavorable. No fucking kidding. On the review aggregator of Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 0% rating based on 27% of reviews, which is the absolute bottom tier of Rotten Tomatoes. 
In the CNBC special House of Cards, the crashing of two $500,000 cards which you saw with the Lamborghini for a single scene is cited as a direct example of the excess of the pre-crash subprime loan market in the mid-2000s in America. Quick loan funding at Lonson's crumbled and of course Sadek lost his license. The film's failure actually exacerbated that situation. Sardik was then sued completely out the ass by a whole bunch of casinos for not paying up gambling debts, and Vanity Fair listed him as number 86 in their 100 people to blame for the economic crisis, dubbing him Predator Zero in the subprime mortgage game. You know what that means? It means that this movie was indirectly responsible for the subprime mortgage crisis. Say what you want about Nuki, but at least it didn't cause a bloody economic recession. And so this is probably going to be the most harmful movie to society I will ever review. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and drink myself into a stupor and try and forget about this movie. It's been me, Danger Mouse, signing off.